morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of the better, if not one of the best, 3X prisms on the market that, weirdly enough, is fairly inexpensive. This is the Vector Paragon 3x18. Now, before we get into all that, if you'd like to help me out personally, you can, of course, like, share, and subscribe, as that is all free and does help me out quite a bit. On top of that, there's my website, which in theory has some things in stock. Now, full disclosure on the Vector Paragon is that they did send this optic out to me for free to review. On top of that, there is also a discount code in the description down below. That is a dual affiliate and discount code. So if you use that code, you get 10% off of your order. And I also make 10% off of that order. Do not feel the need whatsoever to use that. I don't really care for affiliate marketing whatsoever, but it is there. Now, on top of that, they've also sent me at this point probably about a half dozen optics to review. Some decent, some not so much, and fortunately, this is one of the better ones. Now, for those of you who don't know, Vector is a overseas OEM manufacturer, so they manufacture a lot of what you see rebranded currently on the U.S. market. A lot of it, if it's from overseas, Vector may or may not have had a hand in actually making that product. Now, contract manufacturing rebranding has been around for a long time. It's nothing new, but just know that Vector is one of those companies that is actually producing the stuff that comes from overseas. Now, getting into specifics on the Vector 3X Paragon, this is, of course, a fixed magnification 3X prism. In terms of size and weight, it's about three and a half inches long, inch and a half wide. And fortunately, the mounting pattern is T1, T2 compatible. So in terms of height, it can be literally whatever you want it to be. Now, in terms of weight, this comes in at under eight ounces. I believe they rated it at like 7.9 ounces, which is coincidentally uh, exactly like what you're going to find on the Primary Arms SLX 3X Prism. So in terms of size and weight, this one is uh, a little bit thicker because the battery tray is so tall. It's a little bit smaller in terms of the body, but in terms of overall size and weight, they're going to be nearly identical. And again, the Primary Arms SLX 3X is probably going to be its most direct comparison. And in some ways, the Vector is going to be quite a bit better. Now, the body itself is 6061 T6 aluminum, which is fairly standard for the industry. On the top of the optic, we have a plus and a minus button for adjusting your illumination settings. I believe you have 10 settings in total, two night vision, eight daylight settings. And on maximum brightness, it does get daylight bright slash daylight tinted. It's pretty good and is definitely visible in full daylight. However, it's nothing like a red dot or like a fiber wire reticle or anything else like that. But again, for a prism optic where it's not necessarily needed, it is at least decent. Now on the body itself, you of course have your windage and elevation, which I believe are in half MOA increments. They are uh, unprotected or they're exposed turrets, but they are very nicely recessed into the body. And as we'll get into later on during the drop testing and in our other testing, uh, they did not experience any major shift in zero. So all good as far as that goes. Now on the right side of the body, we of course have our battery tray. It is a single 2032 battery that powers the reticle. Now in terms of battery life, I think it's rated at like 10,000 hours, which is pretty decent. And that is also combined with auto off technology. So I believe after eight hours, of you know not touching the illumination settings, it will automatically turn off, therefore saving your battery life. And 10,000 hours, eight hours at a time is a very, very long time. Now, last thing on the body itself is going to be the rear diopter for adjusting the reticle to your eyes. And uh, that's about it. Now, as far as the body goes, the feature set goes, the controls, it's all very simple. There's nothing really crazy going on with it. When we get into the good stuff is when we talk about the usability of the optic. So a lot of the times 3X prisms can be very unforgiving in terms of their eye box and eye relief. Fortunately, this is an area where in terms of usability, the Vector Paragon does a very, very good job. So you get a basically perfect picture at about three and a half inches. You can go back a little bit. You can go forward quite a bit and still get a very, very good sight picture and your left, right, up, and down, which is going to be your eye box, is also very good. Now, as you notice, this does not have a cantilever mount to shove the optic further back. They do sell them separately, and of course, because it is a T1, T2 style platform, you can find quite literally any type of mount out there that you could possibly think of. However, it does not need it. Now, as I have it set up currently, I do have it all the way back on the LWRC ICDI, 
And at the very last Picatinny rail section, it is very adequate. I usually don't have my stocks all the way out anyways. I am not a particularly tall person, so two clicks out for me. And that sets up the eye relief basically perfectly. So eye relief and eye box are very, very good. If not the best that I've seen personally on a 3X Prism. Again, it is very, very forgiving. Now, talking about the field of view, the field of view is rated at 38.8 feet or something. Basically just 39 feet. 39 feet field of view at 3X is very, very good as well. It's going to be better than most of the competition. Uh, the only one that has a little bit better field of view or quite a bit better field of view that I have personally used is the 3X Trihawk from Swamp Fox. That has a 52 feet field of view at 3X, which is just absolutely insane. But with that optic, you need to be quite a bit closer. It's also quite literally double the size and weight. So again, basically a 39 foot field of view at 100 yards combined with a very forgiving eye relief eye box means that you get a very, very usable package. On top of that, the image just looks really good. Now, I'm not an optometrist. I don't know what's going on in here to make it look the way that it does, but it has that edgeless effect when you get up set up in the right eye relief where the edges of the optic itself kind of just disappear and it looks really like you're looking at just a transparent 3X image. And the image quality itself, while certainly nothing special, again, it does look pretty good Prism optics, even Chinese manufactured prism optics, tend to look pretty darn good. Maybe a slight step up of your Chinese LPVOs, just because the prescription is much simpler. There's much less glass in between you and the image. And of course, you don't have to worry about any sort of magnification or variable magnification like you would in other scopes, meaning that you get a picture that is fairly bright. It's fairly crisp. It has almost no chromatic aberration or edge to edge distortion. You still get a very good field of view. Colors look fine. Again, so it's definitely in the good usable category, if nothing special like Japanese or German glass, which is going to, of course, be much brighter, crisper, but more realistic colors, so on and so forth. Now, all of that is well and good. At this point, we have a very usable optic that has a very good field of view, decent glass quality. Now we can talk about the reticle. Starting off with the center, you have what I believe is a floating 2 MOA dot, perfectly fine. That is surrounded by, for the most part, a EOTech donut of death with the bottom area cut out. And then underneath, you have BDC holds for 556, I believe, for 3, 4, 5, and 600 yards. Now, on top of that, you also have wind holds for, I believe, full value 5 mile an hour winds, all the way out to, again, 600 yards. That to me is very important. A BDC just by itself without wind holds for 5.56 is nice to have and certainly better than nothing. But in a lot of circumstances where you have even just anything from a 5 to 10 mile an hour wind, whether or not it's full value, you can kind of still use a full value hold to sort of estimate your wind hold and give you a much better probability of a first round impact versus just Kentucky windaging it and holding where you think is appropriate. As far as the reticle goes, there's nothing really crazy or complex going on. The center section of the reticle with the floating 2MOA dot is very precise while also still being capable of good speed. Of course, it is surrounded by basically an EOTech donut of death, which at this point is very intuitive, very natural to use. Just put it on the target at close range and pull the trigger as fast as you want. On top of that, you do have BDC holds all the way out to 600 yards. So again, the reticle is very simple, but it does what you need it to do. And keep in mind that everything around that, the good glass, the very good field of view, and the very usable optic means that you're not getting held back by a too simple reticle that doesn't do enough. It basically does everything that you need, though it might be missing some auto ranging features that you're gonna find in like an ACSS reticle. For some people, they might like the dot over a chevron, so that could be a little bit of a plus there. For me personally, everything surrounding the reticle is very good. And so the reticle being very simple and intuitive uh, for me is not much of an issue, though again, for some people, there might be one or two features lacking in that regard. Now, before we talk about durability of the optic and the double drop test, the mount that is included is a absolute co-witness mount, though they do include a lower one third riser plate. So a 0.2 inch riser plate that pushes it up to a 1.63, I wanna say. And that is how I did all of the testing and the drop testing in it as well. Now, the mount design overall looks like it leaves a lot to be desired. You have two small cross bolts that I think they recommend to 25 inch pounds that go onto a fairly large aluminum locking block on the other side. 
Now on the bottom of the mount, there is a recoil lug, which again should provide a hard stop during recoil and will also provide more contact surface between the mount and your upper receiver. It will also return to zero better, which I actually did take this optic off of this gun to put on a riser plate for the GoPro section. And then I put it back onto the directly onto the rail for the rest of the shooting and the drop testing. And zero shifted about one inch at 50 yards, so about two I'm away. So not a perfect return to zero on the mount, but not bad for a free mount that is included. Again, keep in mind that it is T1, T2 compatible. So any mount that you want that is out there will fit on this guy. So any height you want, cantilever, so on and so forth, if you can afford it, you can attach it to this prism. Now, getting into the drop test, I do a double drop test on basically all of the optics that I test. The first drop onto dirt and rocks and the second one onto an AR500 steel plate. Now, starting out at 50 yards, we do a five round control group, which is again a little bit off of zero just because I took the optic off and put it back on. Then of course we do a shoulder height drop onto dirt and rocks. Now a shoulder height drop onto dirt and rocks is probably one of the hardest impacts that your optic is ever gonna take in a realistic circumstance. However, we can always test beyond that. Now, again, at 50 yards, we do another five round group after the first drop, and we got about one inch of shift up and to the left, just a little bit, so about two I'm away, which is not bad, though again, we would always like to see nothing. Then, of course, we are going to do our last drop, which is a shoulder height drop onto an AR-500 steel target. This is usually a pass fail for most optics. And fortunately, it passed. Now, after we do the shoulder height drop onto the AR-500 steel target, we do another five round group. And again, we got about one inch of shift this time just basically straight down. So now we were about an inch off of our original point of aim, but in a different direction, of course. So we definitely did have a point of impact shift after each drop of again, about two M away because it's one inch of 50 yards, it's about two M away which is not bad and certainly better than most optics that we've tested. And the optic itself should also be noted is perfectly fine, usable, it has not died. There is no issues with it whatsoever. Glass did not crack, mount did not bend. And again, the point of impact shift was there, though overall minimal compared to what we've seen from other optics. In fact, I have now dropped two different primary arms SLX 3X prisms. The first SLX prism, this one here, cracked the glass and bent the cantilever mount section that was included. And then I actually have filmed already a follow-up video on a separate one that they sent out, this time dropping it on the straight riser. And we had a much more drastic point of impact shift than we did on the vector. Uh, however, the glass and the optic body did not actually bend like they did when I was using the cantilever mount section. So, Oddly enough, both of the vector prisms that I've done double drop tests on, this is the 1X model and the 3X model that is here on the LWRC, have held up pretty darn well when we're talking about their point of impact shift after experiencing a very sharp impact. Again, this one here got a drop onto an AR500 steel plate and was perfectly fine with almost no shift in zero. And the 3X model, very similar, though again, about a 2M away point of impact shift after meeting a AR500 steel plate. So, durability of the optic, even with, again, the included very inexpensive mount, is very good. So as we've discussed, the usability of the optic is very good, and I'm also gonna say that the durability of the optic is also very good. Now, it will definitely take a hit, a, with hopefully a very minor point of impact shift, though even compared to other prisms that we've reviewed previously, one of the least point of impact shifts after a very, very harsh impact. Now. There was one minor issue that we did have with this optic, and that had to do with the illumination. Uh, you really could only tell on camera, but it has a very intermittent refresh rate on the actual illumination itself. So you cannot tell when actually looking at the optic, the refresh rate on the illumination looks just fine. However, when you have it on a camera with say, you know, a 250 or one in 250th of a second um, shutter speed on it, you can definitely tell that the optic is flashing or the reticle is flashing a little bit. Now under recoil, you could actually see the illumination flicker a little bit. Not sure if I just didn't have the battery tray tightened down quite enough, but it was definitely something that was noticeable, though again, much more noticeable looking at it on camera versus actually looking at it in real life. Now. We should compare it to, again, probably its biggest competition, and then that is going to be the Primary Arms 3X SLX Prism. In terms of size and weight, again, they're basically the same, both coming in at just underneath eight ounces, depending on what sort of mount that you're actually using. 
One big plus of the Primary Arms SLX 3X Prism is the fact that it does come with like nine different mounting options in the box that you don't need to pay for versus having the necessarily better aftermarket options of the Vector 3X Prism. It should also be noted that um, I've worked with both these companies quite a bit. They both send me a lot of products to review for free. And on top of that, um, the affiliate rate that I get for both of them is actually the same. So I don't care who wins in this specific um, use case. Now, moving on to the usability optic, that is where the vector wins in basically every regard. I'll go ahead and show the side by side or one after the other of actually using them at the same distance, same day, same camera, same color grade, so on and so forth. And you can tell that the vector just has a much better looking image. The illumination is definitely brighter on the primary arms 3X prism. The reticle is also a little bit better in terms of it has more features, auto ranging five and 10 mile an hour wind holds versus only five mile an hour wind holds. So, Again, for some people, they're going to like the more features of the ACSS reticle versus the simplicity of the vector reticle. Overall, I would say that the ACSS reticle is going to be a little bit better. However, the eye box, the eye relief itself is much shorter on the primary arms optic, and the overall image quality is also reduced. It's much less pleasant to use, so that's why you probably want to use a cantilever section, even though on this one here I bent the cantilever piece of aluminum that it came with. So in terms of the usability of these optics, the field of view, eye box, eye relief, overall glass quality, image quality, the vector is definitely somewhat better to quite a bit better in every one of those regards than the primary arms SLX 3X prism. This is still good and decent. It's fairly forgiving. It's fairly usable. But again, the Vector is just very good at all those things, while the 3X Prism is only decent at some of those. Now, where the Primary Arms 3X Prism is going to have the edge is going to be in the actual feature set. So the reticle is one gets a little bit brighter in terms of its illumination. The reticle overall is just a little bit better featured and it has auto on and auto off, which is very nice. They're auto live technology and I believe 20,000 hours of battery life, though I'm not sure if that's at a medium setting or at the lowest setting. Either way, that is, of course, with auto on auto off technology. So it's going to be lasting you a very long time. Overall, I think the 3X Prism from Primary Arms is very good. It is very usable. It gives you a ton of performance for its size and weight. In terms of raw performance, the Vector is better and it's about a hundred bucks cheaper. I think these come in just over 220 bucks, 230 bucks, something like that. These are very, very inexpensive, give you a ton of performance. It is missing like a couple little features, auto on, auto off. The reticle isn't quite as good. But again, in terms of price to performance and in terms of just overall performance outside of those few aspects, the Vector 3X Paragon is a little bit better. What's up, girl? Sorry if you were hearing some baby noises. There was a five month old rolling around on the floor for just a minute because somebody woke up from their nap. Now, at the end of the day, both of the optics are very good and there are definitely meta reasons why you would want to buy the primary arms over the Vector. In terms of raw performance though, the Vector is gonna be a little bit better and quite a bit cheaper for basically the same size and weight. And if I had to actually use one right this second, I would choose the Vector over the primary arms. But again, there is a litany of other reasons why you might choose one or the other. So with all of that out of the way, guys, let me know what you guys think of the Vector Paragon 3X Prism. And with all of that out of the way, I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Peace off. Can you say bye-bye?